I have over 500 videos on YouTube and people get to ask me all the time, Franklin, what software do you use to edit all of these videos and make this particular content come out as neat and as nice as this? In this particular video, I want to walk you guys through this simple editing software that I currently use. Now, the beautiful thing here is this software I use is that one, it is absolutely free. Yes, you don't have to pay anything to use this particular software. And two, it is available for your desktop. Whether you are using a Mac or you're using a Windows desktop, you can get this particular tool for free on there. And most importantly, it's also available for you on your mobile phone. So whether you're using an Android phone or a mobile app, you can also leverage on this particular editing software and still make the most for yourself. Now, this basically means that there is no excuse to not wanting to start creating content because this is a free tool I'm going to show you guys right now that will help you to edit 100% every of the content that you have on your phone, on your desktop, or wherever it is. Now, let's jump straight on my screen right now where I can actually show you guys how this works and you can actually get to keep this flow, learn it, and start implementing it for yourself. Now, during the course of this video, if you actually have any questions or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And at the same time, feel free to go down there and type in CapCut because yes, CapCut is going to be the software that I'm going to be working you guys through in this particular video today. So go ahead right now in the comment section and type in CapCut. Yeah, so let's jump in right away. So the very first thing I actually want to do is to go ahead and download this particular application. Now, I see that you want to go ahead and download it on your Mac or your Windows laptop or your mobile phone, whichever it is. On the Play Store, the App Store, there is always an option for you to download CapCut in there. Okay, so I currently use a 16 inch M1 Pro for most of my editing and I actually just wanted that because it's quite fast and will deliver in the shortest period of time. But for most of my recording, I do it on my M1 uh, laptop right here. So I'm going to be using this right now. And as you can see, this is the app here. This is the app as you can see on my screen. This is CapCut. So I'm going to tap on it now so that it can actually open up on the screen. Now it's going to take a couple of seconds and then it pops up and we are good to start flying. Now with CapCut open up my screen right now, you can see the first thing here is a version update. They are telling me to update to version 3.0 and blah, blah, blah. But then uh, we're not going to be updating now, but I'm going to really say that CapCut actually upgrades this particular app a lot. Like I see an update once in every five times I open up this particular application. And this shows the dedication to this particular app and, you know, bringing in a couple of more features every now and then. But should I say it is because it is on the Mac version? I don't know. But then this is what I actually get from what I use. So I'm going to cancel this because I don't want this install update to take a lot of time. And what you're going to simply see is that there are a couple of, you know, uh, files of what I've been doing before now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on a new project. And once I click on a new project, it is going to open up this particular interface for me. Now, right here on the screen, you can see this is exactly what CapCut looks like. And it is very bare showing that, oh, this is virgin and there is nothing that has been done in here at all yet. So what I'm simply going to do right now is to walk you guys through all of the things you need to know as a beginner and how to start using this particular simple tool yourself. Now, the first thing I actually want to do right now is to drag and drop in the video I want to import inside of here. So let's go ahead right now and click on import and we're going to be importing this video for ourselves. So I'm going to go over to my hard drive where I have my video and I'm going to import it here. Now, as you can see on the screen, I've been able to import this particular video right now. And with importing this, all I need to do is just to drag and drop it down on this particular timeline. Now, once I have it on the timeline instead of here, I am able to start assessing this particular video right on here and start making a couple of corrections, even it be on this particular space. Now, what this is basically showing you is exactly how raw my videos are from the very start before I edit. Because what you guys actually get here, including this video you're watching right now, is the edited version. So coming in here, you can see from the beginning, I'm actually just trying to research and look on my screen to see what is the best hook or whatever it is I'm going to be using. But when you do a quick play through this particular video, you can see with everything moving here and there, I've not even started talking. I am just, you know, flowing through all of, you know, what would help me with my video content for this particular recording. Now, at this very point, scrolling through, you can see that I'm actually gearing up and I'm ready to actually start creating content on here. Now, one of the things you actually want to do is to figure out how to open up your timeline. And in order to open up your timeline, you actually want to, first of all, to see all of the shortcuts that CapCut is going to make available for you. Now, I love using shortcuts because they basically help me to be able to, you know, uh, easily get to access a couple of features or do a couple of things as quick as possible. For example, like I said, open up my timeline on here. So I'm going to come over here, click on help. And once I click on help, I can click on shortcut right now. And you can see my shortcut telling me split, you see, or split, use 
uh, command C, select mode V. Uh, you can see this one. This one is zoom in, zoom out, and just master all of your shortcuts. Now, in this particular case, I usually would even get to edit my shortcuts and give it my own name so that I'm able to remember what I want to my shortcuts for. For example, this might not be the exact same thing you might also have on your own shortcut bar because I've been able to edit a couple of things to what suits my needs. Now, once I have mastered this, I can actually come in here and open up my timeline using the plus button, which is zoom in. And once I'm able to zoom instead of here, it stretches out my timeline and I'm able to cut exactly where I want to cut in my content. Now, let's go ahead and find that very space where I started up this particular video and cut off the other fluffs that are not necessary here. So, let's see. Okay, I'm about to start the content. <coughs> Now, going through this video, you can even see where I'm even yawning and <laughs> trying to stretch my hand and get set for this content. So, I think I started up here. So, you guys can see. So, I can actually just go back a little. And what I'm going to simply do here is to tap on C and then cut this particular content. So, you can see it's cut already and I can actually take this particular out, delete it out ASAP. So, once I go back to the timeline at the start, you can basically see video, I'm that I'm actually starting up already. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can earn over fifty-four dollars every single hour from Google Adsense. Now, when you actually look through this particular content, you will see where I already made a couple of errors again during the hook, and I'm going to still cut that part out and then have a very good hook or the beginning flow for this particular video. Now, once I've been able to cut that particular place out, the next thing I actually want to do is to go through the video and try as much as possible to cut out every single error in this particular content. Now, once I've been able to take that part out and I've actually started out the video, what I want to do next is to make sure I follow through this particular video and at the same time cut out every other error I have in this particular content. Now, I usually call this the first editing phase because right here, I'm actually more focused on making sure that, that I do not have any errors in this particular content. So every mistake, every error, every error where I stretched, every error where I talked twice, and you know, all of those silent places and all, I cut them out. And that is actually going to be the first aspect of my editing. Now, from here, I'm able to move into the second phase where I'm now focused on understanding how the sound works and also making a couple of other animations into my content and, you know, just beautifying it a little more. Now, this is much more easier because I've already done the first part where I'm able to cut and join and cut and join and cut and join. And I have a full video straight up and I can actually start, you know, thinking of how best I can actually edit this content to make the most out of it for every of the viewers who are going to be watching through this particular content. Now, once I've been able to do all of the cut and joins that is needed here in this particular content, we are entering into the phase two. And right into the phase two on here, we're actually going to go ahead and face this menu on the top right hand side of this particular screen. Now, this particular section here basically just shows you things around the media file you've uploaded, your audio file, the text. If you're going to be adding any text here on the video, uh, checking up on stickers, if you need stickers from effect to transition, filters, and also adjustment. Now, this aspect basically just shows you everything you actually need to add into the content that will actually get to, you know, beautify your content or give it extras and all of those. But then this particular other side here, uh, the left hand side of this particular, you know, uh, menu box, you basically would see things like video, uh, audio, speed, animation, adjustment. Now, all of this is actually going to be giving you more proper insights on every of the individual additions you've been able to add to the video itself. So, for example, you've added that audio or you added a sound effect or whatever it is. You actually want to come over here and now set that particular sound effect or music or whatever in the best way to fit that particular content. If you've added a sticker, if you've added some text, if you've added some effect, you will come over to this other side and you animate it in the way that it's going to fit that particular content and most probably will be presentable to anybody viewing that content. Now, I'm going to give you guys real life examples here. So, for example, I actually am talking about how people can actually make about. Uh, Now, when you actually look at this particular content right here, you can see I'm actually sharing with you how you can actually earn $54 with Google AdSense. And all I simply want to do here is to, first of all, come in and let's say I actually want to add a couple of audios instead of here. Now, if you're actually editing for YouTube, what I'm going to simply say here is to actually make sure that you're able to get no copyright sound so that you do not get copyright strike on your content on YouTube. 
Now, this same thing also works for TikTok business. But if you're freely using the TikTok app for free for creators, you can simply go ahead and attach any music you have here or even bring in your own because there's less copyrights on the kind of music you use in the background of your videos on TikTok. Now, one of the places I actually get most of my music from is Pixabay.com. Now, Pixabay.com is where I can actually access free music and also free sound effects from. And the beautiful thing here is, yes, one, it is free to actually get all of these things. And even those sounds that are not totally free, and you might actually get the copyright strike for, Pixabay still gives you access to the license so that if you're getting a copyright strike and you can defend your copyright strike with the license of that particular music and you are still good to go. Now, coming over here, I could actually say, uh, give me a cinematic music and I'm going to go over to music, okay? So I'm searching for this now. You can see I have one here. So you guys can hear this sound. I'm going to click on download. And once I click on download here, now it's telling me right here that this music is by this particular creator, but then uh, it is very start on YouTube already, which means that I need to access the license. Now, if I'm going to be using this music, all I want to do right now is download this license on my laptop so that if I'm going to be getting a copyright strike, I can defend myself with this particular license and the copyright strike will be off on my channel. I'm going to come back to... CapCut, go over to the media section, go over to import again because now I want to bring in the music. I'm going to go over to download and I'm going to access the music file and import it. Now once I'm here, I can just simply go ahead and add this particular music down on here. And like I said, this part helps you to introduce new elements into your editing, but this other section helps you to adjust those elements that you're actually bringing in at this particular space. Now, one of the first things I want to do is to reduce the volume of this particular music. And I usually want to reduce to as low as 30 sometimes, minus 30. And uh, this is basically because I don't want this particular music to be overshadowing my own voice. Okay, so it should be playing subtly on the background. And that is that for that. <laughs> so I'm going to play it now so you can see. I'm going to show you how you can earn over $54 every single hour from Google AdSense. Now, when you actually notice that your own sound is still very loud and, you know, the music is actually not heard at all, you actually want to go ahead and increase it a little. So let's say we actually increase it to minus 15 decibels and we come back here and we just try to listen to the audio again. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can earn over $54 every single hour from Google AdSense. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually make $54 every single hour from Google AdSense. Now, with what we've done here, you can see basically that we've been able to make a couple of adjustments on the sounds and it sits perfectly fine. Now, you can also do a couple of fade in, fade out and a couple of other settings here. You can also do some voice changes and all, but these are not really necessary. Now, another thing we should want to add is also sound effects. Now, beyond music, you want to hear all of those typing, those clicks, those chaching that people get to add in their content. You can easily go ahead and use this particular as this particular space to get all of those. Okay. So let's take, for example, here, I want to use this particular, you know, sound effect. And this is people sharing and applauding, right? Yeah, so I could just basically carry it in and then import it or bring it down into my timeline on here. Now, because of the kind of content I'm actually creating, which is where I want people to actually hear about money and all of those, I could actually just start this way. So you guys will just see what happened now. So the sound effect already just also played. Now, most times for my own sound effect, I love to increase it than reduce it because I actually want it to actually stand out even with my voice still in the audio. So what I usually do most times is I wait for a particular aspect where I'm not really speaking much and I put in that sound effect so that it can also be heard because it gets to trigger a couple of emotions when people get to hear those sound effects. Right. So once you've been able to populate this, I'm going to go over to the next now, which is text. Now, there's something that CapCut actually does, which is allowing you to quickly get to populate the entire, you know, uh, video with caption. It's called the auto caption feature. And once I actually get to click on this, you will see how I can actually auto populate all of the video with the auto caption feature. Now, let me go ahead and show you guys how it works right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create. And once I click on create right now, it's going to take a couple of uh, seconds and you will just get to see how CapCut is going to populate or create the caption of every of the words I've used in this particular video right here on screen. Now, this particular process is done. And as you can see right here, uh, when I play the video, you will see a couple of caption on the screen. But then this caption might just be, you know, with the meh, 
you know, uh, design caption here and the default settings. And I'm going to really make a couple of adjustments that will actually, you know, still bring this particular text design to life. Now, like as it is, I've been able to add my new elements from here. I will come over here and then make changes to the text that I've been able to add right inside of here. Now, what I'm going to do is to tap on the one of the text and come over here. You can see this button that says apply to all. Come down. I'm going to go ahead and change this to Avenir next. That's the uh, font style. And increase the font size. I want it to be very big and bold. Okay. Depending on what you want, basically. And uh, make a couple of changes here and there. But come over here, change this uh, preset style to this one. And I also just want to come down and then I could add a stroke. Or most importantly, I could just, you know, see where I could adjust the color. So let's say I want to adjust the text color to purple. And I have that inside of there. Now, what this is, uh, I can actually go next now to check for the templates, right? Which one I most likely want to use, or just choose a couple of animation styles that work for me. So I could actually just tap on this right now, and you can see it's actually showing that particular design style in that format. Uh, another thing I can do is also to go back to captions, and when I'm in here, I can actually just, you know, make a couple of changes here and there on what it should look like from on here, and I'm good to go. Now, coming over to this part classes, remember I, I ticked on apply to all, and that means that every of the text on screen here has uh, this particular you know, design. So if I actually want to make a single change to one particular text, I could just unclick this particular apply to all, and it still works for me that way. Now, another thing I can also do, most likely, is to come over to caption here, and when I'm watching this video, I can be correcting every of the caption that you know, has maybe a misspelling or whatever it is. Definitely, AI is not going to get your words 100%. And this basically means that you actually want to correct the AI and, you know, make the most out of it, right? <laughs> awesome. So I want to click on this. I'm going to show you how you can earn over $54 every single hour from Google AdSense. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually make $54 every single hour from Google AdSense. And coming over here, you can basically see this is Google AdSense and the now, you guys can basically see that that is actually text on screen. Now, it's not really, really perfect like what you actually, you know, would see on my final video. But then this is just how it works. So I'm going to proceed now to make a couple of more edits and then beautify this particular text on screen and align it in a way that you are going to be wowed. <laughs> okay? Awesome. So I could also go ahead and add a couple of other text like here. I could just bring in text, drag and drop in a new text instead of auto caption or use a text template or whatever it is. Now, another thing I actually want to most likely do is to add what we call stickers. Now, all of these stickers are basically just, you know, able to give you a couple more effects on this particular content you have instead of here. And that's it. At the same time, we have a couple of effects here, which you can also add for the effect section. You can also add this effect and the effect just basically helps to, you know, give your video uh, like an extra effect added on it. You can also check on the transition and the filters and also a couple of adjustments here. But to be honest, once you have a video and you have audio, you have sound effects, you have very good text there and you can actually add a couple of stickers wherever it's necessary. My guy, your video is 100% done. Now, once you're able to do this with adding all of your captions, making the corrections and all, you actually want to go ahead and click on export. Okay. So once you click on export right side of here, you can actually add the title of the video itself. You want to go ahead and also, you know, uh, choose where you want this particular video to be exported. So let's say I want to be exported to my download. And once I have this, I can actually choose the, you know, resolution 1080p. So I actually shoot my videos on 4K. So you can see it's going up to 4K here. Or I could also leave it at 1080p or 2K, which is also very fine and okay. Now, I'd most likely advise you to leave your videos at 1080p because, you know, anything below 1080p just doesn't sit well again. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So uh, for the bit rate, you can also, you know, uh, leave the bit rates on lower. For me, I, I, I leave it at recommended. But then the more the bit rates, the more the size of the video. So if you actually don't have much space, you can just leave it at lower. And for the coded, leave it as it is. For the format, leave it at MP4. And for the frame rate, you can just leave it at 30 frame rates per second. Now, it's depending on how you shoot. But most people are most likely going to shoot at 30, within 24 to 30 frame rate per second. So this is also very fine. 
and once we have this we can see the information here duration is 28 minutes size is 1.31 gig and i can actually go ahead and export so once i click on export here CapCut is really very fast with the exporting but it might actually take a couple of minutes and once you're done you have your video that you are ready to upload on youtube on tiktok and on different places anywhere you actually want to upload it now like i actually said this particular application works for you on your desktop whether it's mac or windows and also your mobile phone android or iphone so you have access to using it anywhere and anyhow you want this is a simple software i use for my editing and you too can also use this particular same software for yourself and you know get to start making the most out of creating content in this particular space let me know if you currently are a CapCut fanboy and you're using CapCut. let me know in the comment section below and at the same time if you have any questions or you want me to actually you know touch a couple of more specific areas here let me know in the comment section and do well to as well join in my whatsapp community here i share series of ideas and discussion well now you can basically scale your online business so go ahead right now and use the link in the description to also access my whatsapp community and join us inside of there okay so this is for this particular video today guys if you love it give it a thumbs up right now and subscribe to my channel and the bell icon so that you do not miss any of my videos with this guys i'll be seeing my next video peace